sponsors products. And now, goodbye to you all. That's the way you feel about it. I'll hang around for another year. Out! <laughs> well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $100,000. Isn't that right, George? Well, I think you're being a little generous. I, I think we, uh, each couple has a chance to win $10,000. What's the secret word, George? Uh, let's ask the duck. Uh, if we could. You mean you don't, the duck knows more than you do about this, show? Well, in this case, he knows the secret word. Oh, well, there it is, huh? And in just a moment, uh, Groucho will chat with our first couple, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Uh, Groucho, uh, Grace uh, Garrett and Chuck Lewis are on deck, so folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bachelor life. Say the secret word, and you divide 1,250 pesos. Now, uh, Grace Garrett and uh, Chuck Lewis. If there's anything I'd like to do is to Chuck Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is, uh, you're Grace, huh? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> do you mind if I call you Grace? I wouldn't like it if you called me anything else. I don't think I'd answer you. Mm. I'm gonna have some trouble here tonight, I guess. <laughs> Where are you from, Grace? Greece? Stanley Campbell. <laughs> Would you mind if I asked you your age, uh, Grace? Not at all. Well, uh, I will ask you your age. What is your age? I'm 77, but I feel like I was about 40. Oh. I feel like 40, too. I feel like 40 elephants just dragged me through a knot hole. <laughs> What's the reason you feel 20, 35 years younger than you are? Well, I think I... Uh live right and mm -hmm. i haven't any bad habits mm -hmm. we'd make a great team i have no good habits <laughs> we could nullify each other <laughs> now, come now grace everybody has some bad habits are you sure you have none i'm positive well, what's the point of getting out of bed in the morning <laughs> well i get hungry <laughs> are, are you married no i've been a widow for 23 years are you uh, interested in uh, Having another go at it? Oh, no. No, I should say not. I live alone and like it. Well, I wasn't proposing. I was just checking. Well, <laughs> well what fun do you get out of living alone? Well, I can enjoy my own peculiarities. Mm -hmm. Such as mm -hmm. what? Well, such as putting uh, ketchup on my pie if I want to. Mm -hmm. Nobody to stop me. Put ketchup on pie? Ketchup on my pie. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me there are people living alone just so they can put ketchup on that? <laughs> what, what kind of uh, pie do you put the ketchup Raspberry. on? Raspberry. <laughs> There's nothing personal in that oh, no. pie, is there? Not at all. No. Not I thought you were giving me a piece of it. No. <laughs> your, your name is really Chuck Lewis, or is, is this just a pseudonym? <laughs> That's the name, yes. Pseudonym? <laughs> That's my real name. Yeah. Where are you from, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck? Well, I was uh, born in Gainesville, Georgia, but uh, traveled all my life. I guess we, I lived in Glendale, California most of the time. That's where I went to school. Now, what did you study in school? I took business administration. Uh, why, why did you take that? Well, I guess that was about the easiest thing they had. <laughs> what business did you go into uh, after you left college? Well, actually, I didn't go into any business. I uh, kind of became a golf bum. How long did you stay in the golf game? Uh, well, I'm still in it. You mean you're a pro or are you just putter around? Well, I'm a pro. I'm at the Kenilworth Lodge in Seabring, Florida. You know like I mean? that joke about you just putter around? <laughs> That's huh? fine. Yeah. You didn't I've pay heard any... it before. You, you paid it? <laughs> in other words, you consider that a pretty stale joke, is that? Well, <laughs> well what are some of the uh, big uh, tournaments you've won while you were puttering around? The Masters, the PGA, the Open? Oh, no, I've never won any of those big ones, but mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I don't even play tournaments anymore. What do you play, uh, pitch and putt? <laughs> no, I travel around the country uh, with the Chuck and Linda Lewis mm -hmm. Golf Show, putting on exhibitions. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, you, it's a golf uh, golf show. That's right. Yeah. Have you, Grace? Have you changed your mind about getting married again after listening to? Oh, positively but are you not. Still, oh no, no. You still want to drown your uh, sorrow in ketchup? Yes, huh? I certainly do. How do you support yourself? Do you depend on a girdle or do you have a job? Well, I um. <laughs> Babysitter, Grace, I, help. I don't know what you were shifting there, but it looked... Well, it, it certainly looked as though it had been uh, effective. Well, it was a little shifty, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> now, what do you say you do? You're a girdle shifter? No, I'm a professional babysitter. Uh, oh, a babysitter. Well, why are you standing up if you're a babysitter? Well, I, uh, I sit while I'm at the hotel. At, where is this? Do you do this? Statler Hilton. Oh, I've seen some pretty good babes I'd like to sit with at the Statler <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, you mean when Mr. and Mrs. Statler go out uh, in the evening, you just sit there and watch the hotel so nobody steals it? No, I, I look after the uh, children of the guests of the hotel, and they bring their children with them, you know, and they send for me. And I go down and act as a grandmother. Well, how no. do you like uh, grandmother babysitting? By the hour. Oh, I like it very much. In a big, is it any different than sitting for private families? Yes, because I don't have to wash the dishes. <laughs> Do you find your work interesting, Grace? Very. I find it very interesting. Children are very interesting to me. Uh -huh. Well, could you give us an example? Of well, the... one oh. evening, I was to be left alone with a little four-year-old boy while his mother went to the theater. Uh -huh. And before she left the room, she stood in the doorway, and she told the poor little fellow what to do. She told him what not to do, and what would happen if she didn't get a good report from me when she got back. Finally, the door slammed and she was gone. The little fellow threw up both hands. He said, Miss Garrett, that woman is making a nervous wreck of me. <laughs> do you charge for babysitting or do you just do it because you're fond of children? No, I'm very fond of children, but I'm also fond of those dollars that I get. You know, I get a few. You're a very A dollar an hour. Dollar an hour? Until midnight. And a dollar and a half an hour after midnight, and I always hope that they'll stay out all night. <laughs> Well, Grace, if I had any small children and needed a babysitter, I'd certainly call on you. Mm -hmm. well, I the, hope you have some. You. <laughs> you know, you asked me a little while ago if you could call me Grace. Would you mind if I'd call you Julius? No, I, I'd be flat. Yeah, I read the McCall oh, magazine. I couldn't wait for your book. The title of which is Groucho and Me, on sale at all books. Oh. <laughs> This is the this is the secret word. Yeah, so you yeah. just won yourself fifty dollars. Well, isn't that wonderful? That's the equivalent of, of sitting in the hotel room for about thirty hours. I know. And here's fifty for you, Thank because you. you laughed so loud at that putter around you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think I've forgotten that old boy. <laughs> Grace, I I would say that you're the perfect combination of Mother Goose and Milton Berle. <laughs> I don't get it either, but... <laughs> it's good anyway. It's good. It, it, I like that. Let's, let's put it there. It's a compliment. Uh-huh. Well, thank you. It's a I didn't recognize it, but you. I'm glad it is. <laughs> well, if I didn't know, if I had thought at the time that it was a compliment, I wouldn't have said it. <laughs> uh, I think we came out even on that exchange. Mm -hmm. Now, your name is Chuck Lewis, huh? These shady enterprises on the golf course. Now, just how do you make a living? Do you trim the suckers at so much a hole? Oh, no, we travel around, as I said, with uh, a Chuck and Linda Lewis golf show, putting on exhibitions. Is that your wife, Linda Lewis? No, that's my daughter. Your daughter? Mm -hmm. I, uh, you do tricks with that's the golf That's right, course? tricks golf shots, so mm -hmm. we do it with uh, that. I, I do trick car. golf shots, too, but I don't get paid for it. That's my regular game. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you perform sometime, Chuck. Could you arrange to give an exhibition at Hillcrest? That's my golf club. Well, I'd love to, but I have the clubs right here. I'd like to show them to you. You have the Hillcrest Club here? <laughs> no, my trick club. Oh, well, go, go get it. Okay, fine. He's pretty eager. I'm, I'm surprised he waited this long to tell me he's, he's got his clubs back here. <laughs> that looks something like my, my golf bag. Here's one of my own. This is the new fur grips on the club. See, what you feeling? Nice. Yeah. I feel like this. <laughs> The reason for this is that no matter how bad you play, you're still tickled with your game. <laughs> and, and you didn't think that to putter around was very funny. <laughs> <did you? laughs> 
here's one that uh, I think you might like, uh, Groucho. This was designed for people that hang around joints. <laughs> that comes in pretty handy, huh? <laughs> and then uh, one invention I'm quite proud of is this one right here. This right here. It's this is a crooked putter. Dolphins. No, this is a putter designed for people with big feet. <laughs> Oh, What's what, that big one for? Oh, well, the doctors told me I've got to stay away from golf. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, the original of that joke is the fellow with a very long cigar. And the doctor, the fellow says, what do you do? They says, I was told to stay away from tobacco. And you have the nerve to tell me that joke. <laughs> and transfer it from its original location. And, and stick it on the golf now, eh? And you didn't like putter around. Jeez. Well, what's the best part of your golf act, uh, Chuck? Yeah. Well, actually, I think the best part of the golf act is my eight-year-old daughter, Linda, who is the world's youngest golf professional. Is that so? And you have her here with you? Oh, yes, she's right well, here. could you have her dance out here? Yeah. Linda, come on out, honey. Linda, come over here. Shake hands. How do you do? You're a very cute little girl. Are you always this pretty? <coughs> Huh? Yes? I want you to meet Mrs. Garrett there, uh, Linda. I She's a babysitter. Okay. She hates children after midnight and, <laughs> and and frequently before. Now, Linda, what do you do in the golf act? Are you the a female caddy? No, I, I hit a ball out of somebody's mouth with my club. Uh, you hit a ball out of somebody's mouth with your club? Yes. Couldn't you just hit them in the mouth with a club and forget about the ball? <laughs> Could you do that for us right here? Sure. No, where would you hit the ball? Out, out towards the audience? Yeah. <laughs> well, you, uh, will you set it up so she can hit the ball? Lay down and I'll hit it out of your mouth. <laughs> uh, the only ball you're going to hit out of my mouth is a meatball, not any of <laughs> Well, Grace, uh, are you interested in this? I, uh, because mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I guess we love No, it. you can have this. <laughs> if we put a little uh, ketchup on the golf ball, would you, <laughs> would you well, do it then, huh? No, I wouldn't do that. I might try to eat it. <laughs> what about you, Chuck? Well, I'll do it. Oh, well, we finally found a simple mind. <laughs> All right, let's have it. Gotta take a practice one so I see that we're going to go <laughs> Now's the time for you to putter around. <laughs> Linda, that was wonderful. You're a fine golfer, Linda. By the way, uh, what was that ball made of? Cotton. Cotton? George, would you retrieve that cotton ball? You know, George is a cotton-picking fool. I don't know. <laughs> now, uh, George, tell them how we play the game. Well, uh, as you can see, we have questions ranging from one to $300. The $300 questions are tougher than the two, and the two are tougher than the one. You get four chances. The object is to earn at least $500, because if you do, you get to come back at the end of the game and maybe try for $10,000. Now, you selected cities and uh, small towns, I believe it was, of uh, the United States, right? Right, yeah. Uh, Grace, pick the first one. $100. $100 one? One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, here are the cities and towns. Carson City, Lovelock, and Reno. What is the state? Nevada. Nevada is right. You've got $100. $100, yes. Mm -hmm. 400 more to go. Let's try a 300. A 300? Uh, how about this one right here? That's a nice looking 300. We just got these in fresh this morning. <laughs> in what state are Haley, Ketchum, Jerome, and Moscow? Haley, Ketchum, Jerome, and Moscow. Wyoming. Right. No, I'm sorry. It's Idaho. You should have known that from uh, Ketchum. Well, you, you have $100. You haven't lost you have that. Two you more opportunities to earn the five. Grace, take a while. What, uh, you want to try a 200 this time? Grace is the great compromiser. <laughs> In what state are Saugatuck, Saginaw, and St. Ignatz? Saugatuck. Michigan is right. And that was $200. You yeah, now I have, have three. Now, now $300. Have, then I won't 
Mm -hmm. Well, we have to go for another 200. No, yeah. well, you don't have to. But I it mean, does make sense, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're bringing a new note into this show, aren't you? <laughs> the object is to get $500. We it's, have 300 now. That's the object of your And you've had three questions, and this is your last question. Give us 200. Uh, how about this one here? Fine. All right. This is a $200 question. If you get it, you'll have your 500. In what state are Jonesboro, Lake Charles, and Opelousas? Opelousas. O-P-E-L, yes, Louisiana. And you made $500? Yes. So you'll be back to try for maybe two, five, or $10,000. Thank you. Well, congratulations, and I hope we see you later. Thank you. Hasta Thank mañana. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> with the gorilla and the trick golf shots uh, so that our next couple may not have time enough to uh, play the complete quiz with you. However, they are standing by and they have agreed to come out and talk to you and come back next week if uh, the time runs out tonight. So I'm sure you're going to like meeting a nice, young, unmarried couple. Their names are Margot Road and K.W. Shelby. So folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide an extra $100. Margaret Road and K.W. Shelby. Margaret Road, uh, you look like a pretty dangerous road with all those curves. And why the uniform, Margot? Are you a letter carrier? Not quite. I'm an airline hostess and this is my uniform. Oh, well, that's very attractive. Which airline are you with? Lufthansa. I'm all right. How are you? I say, which, uh, <laughs> which airline are you with? Lufthansa. What is a Lufthansa? Is that the helicopter service that flies between Glendale and Cucamonga? No, quite. No, we fly all over the world and it's the German airline. Are you a German, Margo? I am, yes. Are you a Berliner? I was born in Berlin, but I'm from Hamburg. So you're from Hamburg? Yeah. Yes. You're a Hamburger, in other words. If I had some ketchup, I'd put the bite on her. <laughs> Who knows, maybe later we two could get together and get a bun on. <laughs> you care for that joke, uh, Margot? Well, was that a joke? <laughs> well, you took know. those words right out of that audience's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. I hate to leave you, but I'll come back to you pretty soon, you know. All roads lead to Margaret Road, it says here. K.W. Shelby, huh? Yes. Yeah. Do you know that song, Shall We Shall Be Gather by the River? No, I'm afraid I don't. Uh, You've met Miss Road, uh, huh? Yes, just a few moments ago. Would you like to take this road and see where it leads? <laughs> no. Are you crazy? <laughs> no. Are you just shy? Uh, well, no, I, uh, I think Mr. Fenneman uh, jumped to conclusions, and though he I... He also am... jumped at Miss Rose when she came. <laughs> but that's another story that we can't talk about. Yeah. But though I am uh, still single, I'm planning on being married in just a couple of weeks. You're going to get married? Yes. What you're insinuating, in other words, is that this little girl isn't good enough for you, is that it? <laughs> no, I, I think she's very, very attractive, but, uh, well, I'm, I'm engaged already. Well, I hope you're very happy. <laughs> I don't take this kind of resistance lying down, you know. I haven't finished with this romance. You'll develop a taste for hamburgers before we're through. <laughs> before we're through, or my name isn't Dear Abby. <laughs> it happens to be Ella Wheeler Wilcox. <laughs> now, where are you from, Shelby? Shelby, it's in Montana, isn't it? That's well, where Gibbons and Dempsey fought for the championship. Well, there's you know several that? Shelby. Were you there. named after that fight? No, I wasn't. No. How'd you happen to come to California? Uh, well, my uh, hot water heater blew up. <laughs> well, I'd save you a cheap way to travel. <laughs> that must have been quite an explosion to blow you all the way from California, all the way to California. Where were you at the time, in New York? Uh, no, I was in New Orleans. <laughs> well, I guess it could blow you that far. Huh? <laughs> well, what did you have to do with coming to California? Uh, well, I was uh, getting ready to take a shower, and there was no hot water. So I went out to the kitchen to see what was the matter, and uh, I discovered that the hot water heater had gone out. We do. Uh, 
You went, well, who was in the kitchen when you went in there? No, I was in there alone, uh, fortunately. Yeah. Uh, Groucho, uh, I'm sorry, but as we anticipated, we are out of time. And our first couple is entitled to a chance at the big money at the end of the show. So as we agreed, uh, you people are going to have to come back next week. Well, I certainly want to continue this conversation. I know you both must have a lot to talk about. Not only that, but we want to give you a chance to win some money. So thanks for being with us tonight, and we'll see you again next week. Uh, what's on the agenda? Uh, Groucher, here are Grace Garrett and Chuck Lewis, who won $500, so they get a chance at the big money, and uh, here they are, coming in right now. To come Congratulations, back uh, kids. You know, this year, if you win $500 or more in the quiz, you get a chance to run your winnings for the night up to $2,000, $5,000, or even ten. So, uh, pick a number from 1 to 10. I'll take um, 6. 6. Put a 6 up here, George. And Chuck? Give me uh, four. 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 That's your first number. It means if the number comes up on the wheel and you answer the question correctly, your total winnings for the night will be 10,000. Now, you've picked the number four. If you, your total winnings will be 5,000 if that comes up. Now, if neither number comes up after the spin, the total will be 2,000. So one of you turn the wheel. Numbers were four and six, and it came up three, so this question is worth two thousand dollars. A total of two. Here it is. In World War I, the 42nd Division arrived in France with every state in the Union represented in its ranks. For two thousand bucks, what was the nickname of this famous army division? Very famous. What's the answer? Well, it's the Rainbow Division, a very famous division. Sorry, mister, but you still have $500. So that isn't too bad. Congratulations, and thanks for being with us, Grace. Thank you. And Chuck.